First Giants Live of the year is happening on the 27th of January. We are starting off, as always, with Britain's Strongest Man, and we've got an incredible lineup this year. So last year was good. Adam Bishop coming back as the champion. Last year, Adam won four of the five events. He was absolutely dominant, but there is some new faces and some returning faces coming back this year. So it's gonna be an even tougher competition. So yeah, we're starting off with last year's champion, Adam Bishop, someone who always does very well at Britain's Strongest Man. Adam is very good at prepping for this contest. He always, the last few years has coming in shape. And like I said, last year, he was dominant at Britain's Strongest Man. Next up, we have Luke Stoltman. He's got a new coach. He's been working hard over the winter. It's going to be interesting to see how that change affects his performance in this one. Kane Francis, another fantastic athlete over the last couple of years. Done very, very well in the Champions League. And he did well at Britain's last year. Luke Richardson, winner of England's Strongest Man, is back at Britain's Strongest Man. And he's been looking fantastic in his training. The man, the myth, the miracle, Mark Felix is at, I think, his 100th Britain's Strongest Man by now. He just cannot stop, still competing at 57 years old. Paddy Haynes qualifying through England's Strongest Man had a fantastic year last year, really established himself on the national scene, and he wants to show everyone that he deserves to be here. Back at Britain's Strongest Man from Ireland, he was second a few years ago. Can he get back to that level this year? Paro Dwyer. And second place from last year, big Gav Bilton. He wants even better in 2024. Sean Gillen, a new athlete at Britain's Strongest Man, winner of the Irish qualifier. Let's see what kind of shape he's in when he competes against Britain's best. The current UK Strongest Man looking to add Britain's Strongest Man to that resume, Paul Smith. The winner of Scotland's Strongest Man last year and qualifying for his second Giants Live competition, Connor Curran. Shane Flowers, who didn't perform how we expected at last year's Britain's Strongest Man, went on to have an incredible year, ending up on three podiums towards the end of the year. He's in fantastic shape. These are great events for him. Looking forward to seeing him back at Britain's Strongest Man. And finally, really needs no introduction, the return of the two-time Britain's Strongest Man, two-time World's Strongest Man. He missed out on Britain's last year. He is back for the title, the spicy one, Tom Stoltman. I like how you've decided that Tom is the spicy one. Well, he's a bit younger, he's a bit more spicy, you know. <laughs> That's fine. So it really is a great lineup this year. I mean, you know, past champions, new up and coming athletes, some fantastic athletes have been on podiums at various different Giants live shows. I'm excited for it. We've got a very interesting set of events and it's a very heavy set of events at this year's competitions compared to what we've seen in the past. Starting off with the deadlift. Yeah. Now this deadlift is a very, very interesting. It's a deadlift for reps, but we have two bars, 350 kilos, or a 400 kilo bar. And I was just watching the Giants Live podcast, and apparently you can do reps on the, t the 400, but if you've kind of finished on the 400, you can drop down to the 350 yeah. and try and get an extra rep or two out with that, which is an interesting twist. And I think if athletes are smart, they may be able to make use of this to kind of get them a few extra points. Possibly, but how many people are going to be repping 400 kilos and then have anything left to do 350? Well, th this is the thing. You've got to decide, do I go absolutely... I mean, firstly, how many guys are going to pull 400? Let's have a look through the list. I think Adam Bishop can pull 400. Yeah. Luke Stoltman. I think yeah. Luke Stoltman could get a rep with 400. Kane Francis is kind of close to that. Yeah. I've seen him pulling 380. Luke Richardson, very, very big deadlifter. Is Mark Felix in good enough shape to pull 400? Paddy Haynes is someone that can pull 400. Yeah. You know, Paro Dwyer could pull 400. Gav Bilton could pull 400. Uh, Shane Flowers can pull 400 and Tom Stoltman. So there's only a few guys in the list that you think 400 is going to be way beyond them. Now, what you have to kind of look at then is who's the biggest deadlifters. You're probably looking at Adam Bishop, Tom Stoltman, Luke Richardson. Yeah. I would say, I mean, yeah, I, think that's I, fair. I, I think, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from Paddy because Paddy beat uh, Luke on the deadlift for reps at England's Strongest yeah. Man. And he's looking fantastic in training as well. But I think, in my eyes, Adam Bishop and Tom are the two superior deadlifters in that competition. Yeah. So then you've got to think, right, if I push to the absolute limit with 400, now what is the absolute limit with 400? We've seen Tom do four. Yeah, that was incredible. was incredible. That was really incredible. Yeah. You, you, your energy system 
is, is drained so fast pulling 400 and kilos. This is event one of five as well at a very fast paced yeah. competition. The, the only way you're going to see people dropping down is maybe they strategically do one rep. Yes. Take a breath and decide to go down to the, the 350. I think if you're going to commit to as many reps as possible on the 400, then you're not going to drop down. I'd be interested to see exactly how the scoring works here because any amount of reps on 400, so one rep on 400 is worth more than three on 350. Yes. Okay, so I could do, I, I could do one on 400. I'd love to see it. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Okay, it's quite similar to how they've done the log lift at the Arnold's, except at the Arnold's you couldn't then drop down and do extra reps with a lighter log. It's actually similar to how uh, they do it at the Shaw Classic. Yes, it is, so where you, you are allowed yeah. to go back. So you've got your time okay. limit, and it's yeah. all done within that time limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I mean, looking at this lineup, we do have some fantastic deadlifts, particularly, like I said, Adam Bishop, he's proven many times how yeah. good he is on a deadlift and Tom Stockman's deadlift is looking incredible right now if you've seen his training video 400 for four reps I can't see anyone pulling more than four no I can't I mean the world record officially is six six is the world record yeah. I mean and that's uh, that was a one-off event yes you know, training so, specifically yeah. for that not so for I, I think knowing there's a whole competition yeah. it's gonna be very difficult to do more than four but it's going to be very important for some people to get that one because I think there's a few guys that maybe they can get 400, mm. maybe they can't. And if they go for it and don't get it, it's going to be and then to you kind of have to drop down to the 300, you might find that is where people's points get split up. So mm. I think, you know, for me, Adam and Tom will come out on top of this. I think Shane Flowers, um, Luke Richardson, they're, they're, they're very... Paddy Haynes. Uh, Paddy, Parr and Gav are all kind yeah. of good deadlifters. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one. But um, yeah, I'd look out for Adam and Tom on the first event. So then moving on to event two, we have the 160 kilo axle press for reps, which is actually pretty heavy for a national title. Yeah, it's very heavy. The, the last time we did axle at Britain's, it was 150 kilos. 160 kilo axle is going to be hard. Especially after this deadlift, I feel. I know it's a totally different body group, but... These guys well, are going to be. Tired. You say it's a different body group. Yes, it is in terms body of the press, <laughs> yeah. but you you need a lot of back strength to clean the axle. And, and to be quite honest, the clean on the axle is the hardest part. A lot of people think of the axle. You know, everyone's great presser. Um, getting the thing from the floor to the shoulders is actually the trickiest part of the axle. Mm. The, the thickness of the bar, the fact that it doesn't rotate. It's not like an Olympic bar which will rotate in your hands easily. It's very draining on the your energy levels just being able to get that bar and i can't really see many of these guys being able to power clean it in one go most of them are going to continental um i think four reps will be very good on this as well maybe maybe five but it depends on time limit as well because it's not like a log where you can kind of roll it up quicker it and takes more time doesn't it, it? The, the clean is draining it takes more time i yeah. think you know a, a mistake can really cost you so athletes that are methodical really get a number in their head and stick to that target i think are going to do better than people that maybe try and rush mm. and maybe try and get a quick early rep but then start to make mistakes and we do have some great axle presses here again tom stoltman this is a, an event he's been looking very good at all of his overheads are tom's overhead great the last few years have been fantastic but really yeah the, the tom's tom's axle is very very good yeah paro dwyer is really good at axle overhead much better than his log yeah this is a much better event for for par par has great flexibility and explosive power yeah. so he lacks a little bit of that shoulder and tricep strength that say like a graham hicks has or eddie hall had but he's technically good on the axle group great mobility and he can utilize that technique and leg power into the axle paul smith also i believe this is a good event for paul paul again anything technical paul yeah. is very good at he has good mobility he's explosive last time we did the axle it was 150 kilos and he did power clean the reps i don't see him doing that with 160 no but i still think he will be competitive and get some mm. some good points on this one Luke Richardson's axle has been looking incredible in training. 180 kilos for three. Now, was that out of the rack? That was out of the rack, okay. but still very it's strong, still improving his pressing. Yeah. Um, Gav Bilton's looking really strong right now. Luke Stoltman, how's his overhead looking? I haven't seen too many videos. Obviously, he's got a new coach he's been working with, so we'll be interested, but we know how strong Luke is overhead. Put strong it this shoulders. way, if Luke cleans it, He's going to press it. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's got tremendous shoulder power. It depends how efficient his clean is, I think, is going to be the major factor for Luke. I'd say Axel is probably a better overhead for Bish, but he has 
torn his bicep doing Axel before, which sometimes yeah. can kind of get into your head. Um, but I think he would still prefer Axel over Log. Okay. And um, yeah, I think this one could be a bad event for Mark Felix and, and Paddy. I mm. think Paddy looking at him at England's strongest man, this is probably the one event out of the five that he's not looking forward to. And yeah, same with Mark Felix. Another massive, I don't know how his axle is, but a massive log lifter is Sean Gillen from Ireland. Again, I think for Sean, it's going to be all about the clean. Yeah. If he gets it up to the shoulders, yeah, huge shoulder power. Um, Shane Flowers has been improving his overhead as well. Yeah. So, like, but so everyone there. <laughs> well, you know, that's the great thing with a lot of these new British guys, they mm. do improve quicker. Whereas some of the, the older guys, the guys that we've seen regularly, they, they kind of stay at that level. Yeah. So Shane, you know, I, I was super impressed with the end of last year. I mean, Kane Francis as well, another athlete that seems to bring the best out of himself on competition day. Yeah, really good. But these two first events, this this deadlift is going to be important for those guys getting the 400. And then the axle is going to be important not making a mistake. Because if you mess, if you miss a rep and you've put all that energy into it, it's draining mm. and it gets into your head so i think if you can be efficient get good points on this it's going to set you up for the the rest of the competition event number three is the bag over bar which is a bag series a bag run if you will sandbag toss yeah, yeah that's there's it. Um, six, six sandbags <laughs> we've done this before britain's strongest man mm. uh shane flowers last time was unbelievable i thought yeah, if you had the really fastest good. time tom stoltman is unbelievable at this uh looking at some of the training videos bish is looking good luke richardson's been looking good gav's good at throwing as gav's well. great thrower mm. paddy's a very good thrower mm. uh so it's it's one of those events you can be the best in the world at but you can still make a mistake yeah. so you know it's one of those where you get it right you can guarantee good points but it just takes one bag to go up and not go over mm. and it kind of throws you off if you get it all right if the technique's spot on and every single bag goes over you can kind of it feels so good you have those other days where it just slightly goes wrong you miss time grabbing a bag you release just a fraction too soon but if they're well trained feeling good they should all do well on this one then we have the carry and hoist now am i correct in thinking this is like a load into an arm over arm yeah so it's an anvil carry okay and then I, i'm guessing it's going to be put into some kind of contraption and then they're going to have to arm over arm hoist it up to a certain distance i'm not sure okay. on the distance right right now but essentially a, a carrying event or loading event into an arm over arm lots of good athletes at this type of event mark felix is great at this time mark felix is very good at arm <laughs> yeah. over arm Strong it's going to need to be quick on the on the um the, the load, the load. Mm. but again you know i keep mentioning him for, for a new guy i think he's really worth looking out for is paddy haynes i've been very impressed with him like i said just that overhead i think it's going to cost him maybe being able to get onto the podium mm. but i think he's going to cause some of the top guys a lot of problems um and again you've got to be looking at shane flowers bish tom, tom stoltman. stoltman gav bilton gav bilton gav is you know gav's trainings look very good he's coming into this show, this competition well prepared fit mm. uh, obviously second last year He's got experience. He's been on the podium in a couple of Giants lives. He won his first international last year. So Gav wants to win this title as mm. well. And then finally, they're finishing on the Atlas Stones. Now, this is the heavy set of stones. Yeah. Um, it needs to be the heavy set of stones with some of these stone lifters. <laughs> Tremendous athletes again on stones, and you know we just mentioned Gav. He's a fantastic stone lifter. I mean, there's not when you look through this list of athletes, there's not a bad stone lifter there. Not really, no. And it's going to come down to as always in a competition, who's in a good position, who's yeah. fighting for those points. I, I've i seen a lot of um, fun going online between Kane Francis and Paddy, both kind oh, of a bit of um, one-upsmanship on the, okay. the stones in training. <laughs> um, I think as impressive as they've looked, I'd still put my money on Tom Stoltman to, to win a stone series, but yeah. we have seen, you know, mistakes can happen on stones. Yeah. It does happen occasionally. Uh, I think all being well, Tom Stoltman is going to win the stones. He's just so confident on them, which oozes out of him when it comes to stones. Well, like, look at the World Tour final. The last time we saw him do a full... He, he one-motioned the final stone. He one-motioned every just... single stone, and he's just so confident in that movement yeah. that... Like he doesn't even need to train them. No, he, he's just so just gifted when it comes to strength. Atlas stones. And I have seen, I've had people messaging me saying, "Have you seen these guys lifting these stones?" When I was competing at my best, I lifted a two hundred and thirty kilo stone in yeah. the gym. 
there's no way I'm getting close to Tom Stalkman. And do it <laughs> after all of this as well, after which all feeling those battered, events, after you know, a really fast paced competition yeah, it's gonna be. I think um I think we might see a few guys struggle with the heavier set, to be quite honest, by yeah, this point. So but I think you need that you want that last stone to really mean something. And you need that separation between performances as well. We don't want does. one second separating three or four athletes, do we? Yeah. I think, you know, I think everyone looking at this would look at Tom Stoltman as the heavy favourite to win. Well, the the thumbnail says, is it a one-horse race? Now, that might, you know, look, probably a bit unfair given... I, 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 I've, I've, seen some, I've, seen, uh, yeah, I've seen some incredible training going on with some of these athletes and anything is possible when it comes to strongman. You know, Tom is the favourite. You just have to accept that. He's his, his track record proves he deserves to be the favourite. And the other athletes will be hoping Tom makes a mistake. Yeah. That's literally all you can hope for. Um, or he's such, having a bad day or whatever, you know. These are such but, good events for Tom as well. That's like, the where's thing. the weakness there? there? There's no weak event there. Isn't. There. <laughs> you look at deadlift. He's awesome deadlifter. Axel press. He's probably the best axel presser in this competition. Bag over bar. Top he's two. incredible at. Uh, the carry and hoist he's just built perfectly for. He's not going to be bad at that. And the Atlas Stones, you're finishing on his banker. Yeah. He, he, I probably can't see him out of the top three on any event. No. Potentially, he could he could potentially win every event. Can you imagine? Has that ever happened? Uh, well, Bish won four was... last year. Yeah, he did. So, yeah. Um, you know, that was that up. was super impressive. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't get carried away yet. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of opposition, but potentially he could win every event. But I know Bish trains very, very smartly. He will prepare as well as he can, and he will come in with his own game plan. Bish we, is a smart athlete. We always see the best of Bish at this competition, I feel. It's somewhere he just... <laughs> seems to be really comfortable and confident yeah. and determined. I think f from a fan's point of view, you you're going to go with Tom as the favourite. And then I think the next positions are going to be exciting. Yeah. For me, it's it's between Bish, Luke Richardson, Gav Bilton and Shane Flowers. Interesting. That would be my... Uh, Luke, potentially, Luke Stockman. Stockman. Yeah. Luke's got some decent events in there. Luke does. He just needs to Luke really get back move, to his best. He can throw, he can lift stones, he's strong overhead. And his deadlift last year was better than it's ever been. Yeah, I think Luke could certainly cause people problems. Don't think he's going to win. No. Um, but he could certainly sneak into a podium if he's in great shape. I think, like I said, I think Paddy Haynes is going to cause people all sorts of trouble, but I do feel that Axel is going to cost him some yeah. major points. But uh, Paddy's the sort of person that could get in between other guys on other events yeah. and really mess things up for yeah, them. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think that's why someone like Tom probably is even more of a favourite because I feel yeah. Tom will probably still beat Paddy on those events and Paddy's going to then beat people that might get between them. Yeah, which actually helps Tom yes. with that stretch and that yeah, lead. Yeah. yeah. But... Who knows? I mean, the, the, the battle for, for the podium is going to be exciting. No predictions from, from us this, this week. I mean, I, I, I this think you can year. tell. I, yeah, I get in trouble if I do predictions, but, I, you know, I, I, if I was going to put some money on it, I'd say Tom Stoltman and those few guys that are going to battle out for yeah. the podium. So if people want to turn up and watch Britain's Strongest Man this year, are there still tickets available? There are, and I will leave a link in the description of the video below. But yeah, 27th of January in Sheffield. It's been the home of Britain's Strongest Man since, I think about 2017 now, 2018, yeah, something like that. Now. Yeah, we've had a few there, but it's a really great show. And I mean, last year was a sellout and with the returning faces this year and the likes of the Stoltman brothers and Luke Richardson, I can see the same happening this year. So make sure you come. We will be there, won't we? First as of always the year. definitely looking forward to it guys let us know your thoughts as always in the comments below hope you enjoyed britain's strongest man give us a like and a comment and we'll speak to you guys soon take it easy